All right, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I'm a comic book colorist, and welcome to my YouTube channel. That is my cat sneezing. All right, <laughs> I don't know if you heard that or not. A long, long time ago, about three years ago, I did a video called The Color Mode Trick. And it didn't get a ton of views, and I don't think a lot of people have seen it. So most of you guys have probably not seen it. And there were some things that I was doing back then, and it, and it worked. Uh, but there's, I found much better ways to do this than I, than I did back then. And so I wanted to do kind of a, a remix uh, version 2.0, uh, I guess, for uh, for this particular trick. And uh, w the way I'm going to be using it is usually if I want to like strongly colorize a scene with like a really strong color, like like in this case where this like in this page in the original video had a sort of blue tone to everything, um, and I brought some e examples here uh, from the same series. You know this whole page has a very uh, is the kind of blue tealish color uh, this page is very green and uh, what I did was just put a layer on top in color mode and I'll show you that in a second and the problem with doing that is if you just wash a whole page in one color without adjusting where it's impacting the most you can get some weird stuff happening. And so I'm going to show you guys an example, and then I'm going to show you how I do it now. And I've got some examples from some other artists and colorists too. So, uh, for example, this is a page, this is page two from uh, Hack Slash Resurrection number one. And I'm going to turn off all of this. And this is actually what's, these are my base colors on this page, which is obviously very different from what ends up on the actual page. And there's a couple layers in here. There's one texture, uh, there's a little light uh, there I turned on, but most of this that you're seeing is this green color right here. And to recreate this, I'm just gonna turn all this off for a second. And I also adjusted the skin a little bit and I brought this uh, skin tone and this red color on her Socks? Is that what that is? <laughs> and I've toned that down a little bit too, just to show you. This is a more uh, natural way of, of how this page would look. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer, just a solid color adjustment layer. And I'm just going to fill that with uh, a color that is kind of, whoops, I don't I didn't mean to just select her skin there. Let's get everything. There we go. And so it's somewhere, got a little more blue in it. So it's something about like that. So that's just in normal mode, okay? So if I change this to color mode, uh, and if I adjust the opacity, you can see that it's, you know, it's affecting all of the image equally. And it doesn't look awful, but the red in her socks and her skin tone looks a little weird and I think the reason that it looks weird is that these tones are almost opposite the color wheel of our wash color that we've put over this so like green which is what we've picked here and red they're opposite each other on the color wheel so when you stack them on top of each other they sort of cancel each other out and it doesn't look great and in some cases like the skin's not popping off the page the way that I want it to now, there's a couple ways you can address this. Now, what I did is I actually just considerably cranked up the saturation on her, the red in her socks and her skin color. So if we go back to the original, you can see like that red is like blindingly red and super saturated, like it's as saturated as you can get. And her skin is, as you can see, like really, really saturated and really, really bright because just leaving it the usual color, it ends up looking weird. It ends up mixing and doing strange things. So that's one way that you can get around this is if there, there's going to be some colors, usually toward the opposite side of the color wheel, that aren't going to look the way you probably want them to look. And so you can either, you know, just go underneath and grab those colors and, and increase the saturation, 
or you can use a mask to control where the areas of that color is impacting. And I'll give you guys another example. So this is a page from postal number 24. I don't think this is out yet, but this is not a particularly spoilery page or anything. But if, if I turn off uh, that, that washed color that I've got over there, you can see there's some, some very, very different colors underneath. It obviously looks pretty different. And this is this color layer here is at uh, layer is at 80 percent, so it's uh, it's affecting all of these colors quite a bit, and it's making everything blue. Now I'm going to turn off the mask on that layer for just a second. Okay, so that blue layer we have here, and then I've got the mask next to it. So if I click that off, well now the the whole page is pretty much blue, and 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 there's nothing really incredibly interesting about that to me, and so. Again, if you think about what's opposite the color wheel, okay, and in this case, uh, opposite of blue is, you know, yellows and oranges, and so, you know, her hair, it's hard to read what color her hair is right now. Like, we know that it's probably a little bit light, but this could be brown, this could be orange, this could be red, this could be any number of colors, and so all I did here, and I'll recreate this real quick, so... I'm going to cover all this stuff up first. Whoops, let me turn the layer back on. All right, so I'm just going to paint all that back in. All right. So what I've done here is I've gone down to my base colors and just selected her hair. Okay. And someone asked me recently about how I go about toggling these little marching ants, this little line you see that dances around the selection. If you go into your keyboard shortcuts, let's do this, and if you go under view, and this is under the application menus, there is a selection edges, and right now I've got it set to control G. Now by default that does something else, but I don't use whatever it was, so I just set it to control G, and that way uh, I just hold down control G and it toggles that off and on, so that's how that works. So anyway, I've got my selection here where hair is. Now I'm going to go to that color mode layer with that blue color in it. I'm going to go to the mask, which is the little white box we see next to it. And I'm just going to get a soft brush, just regular soft brush. And I'm going to lightly paint away where her hair is. Just in a, in a couple of spots there. And just like that, I don't think I did it quite this strong in the original. It was a little bit less opaque. Uh, let's see, something about like that. So, and if you look at this, if you hold down Alt and click the mask, it'll show you. You can see that I've brushed away that blue color from her hair. So, it just looks a lot better. It's hard to for me to like objectively say why other than just there's more color variation and yellow and blue work together pretty well usually but um, instead of just having that blue washed over everything then you can be selective about where it's affecting by using a mask so and I heard Matt Wilson talking about this on a podcast he, he's, he basically said the exact same thing that when he first started you know, he would just put you know whatever 50 percent blue on top of everything and, and then run with it and you know not realizing that there's a better way to do this you know if you can control where those areas are impacting things and you can make a lot more interesting things happen and I'll show you another example of this so like this was a good example I found this is from rumble uh, this was drawn by uh, James Heron and colored by Dave Stewart and like this now, I don't know how Dave did this, how he works or anything, but if I were doing a page kind of like this, then I might have like an orangey red wash over everything, but I don't want it, you know, on that, uh, whoops, I don't want it on the window. And so I could put a mask over this panel and just paint out that red in that window because that blue color, you know, is not going to really be able to come through if there's any kind of red on top of it. So that would be a good example of how you could use that. Or, or like in this panel here, almost everything is this blue and, and, and green, and light, uh, teal sorts of colors, except for these touches of red here and there. 
Now he may have just painted all these these exact colors, and uh, but if you were doing any kind of layer effects over the top, you know you would have to paint that blue out if you were going to use that red because it just wouldn't show up uh, that same color. And Dave probably doesn't work that way. He probably just puts down the exact colors he wants <laughs> after uh, when he's working. So I found a couple of examples where uh, from this is from uh, Kanan which is a Star Wars book. This was, let's see, who is this? This was drawn by, I believe it's Pepe Larraz, is how you say that? And colored by uh, Daniel uh, Curiel, I believe is how you say his last name. And I'm a big fan of Daniel. Him and uh, Marta Gracia come from, it's like they have the same genes when it comes to coloring. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the similar techniques. But, but this would have been, a good example of a place to do this you know because you've got this you know this guy here that's sort of in shadow and so it's kind of got this kind of blue tinge to everything but I wouldn't want that over the fire you know I wouldn't be able to have these really saturated oranges and still have you know that blue color in the front now again I don't know how Daniel colored this but just to give you guys a, a quick example here so let's say that I want to do this on this page. So I'm going to go down to my little half moon symbol here and choose solid color. And I'm just going to pick color about like that. Now right now it's in normal mode so of course it's, it's covering everything. So I'm going to go down to color instead of normal and you can see that it's you know it's tinged everything that color. So just really, really quickly, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm just going to select this area. And if I had the flats, I would just go to the flats and select all this stuff. And I'm going to go to my mask and with black, just paint that out. And so now I've got this really nice, cool, warm thing happening. Okay. Now you could even go into the shapes themselves and, you know, and paint out some of these areas. So I just wanted to go along the edge here and, and and I didn't want that blue to impact these edges maybe. Just to give you guys another idea here. So this is a way that you can mix up these these layers and use you know a layer like this without it necessarily affecting everything the exact same way. So and again I don't think Daniel really works this way, but it's just one of the million ways that you can that you can do this stuff. Similar thing here, I won't repeat it, but you guys can kind of see there's a slight kind of greenish blue over here in the shadows on this guy because, you know, the action, we're looking past him, so he's he's cast this guy in, in more of a shadow, but then these guys are facing us and they're facing the fire, so you've got all this orange, you know, orange light uh, affecting them there. All right, so I think that wraps it up for this one. And if you guys want to learn more about this stuff, be sure to check the links in the description, links to my coloring course, uh, my Patreon. I've got my PSD files up there, uh, at least a lot of them, not all of them, but <laughs> there's, there's a, I don't know, 20 or 25 up there now, maybe. Um, so you can get in there and see how the magic happens. And if you want more detail, I had someone ask the other day, like, you know, what's the difference in your course? And then you've got 100 videos on YouTube. Um, the stuff in the course is more detailed, and it's it's all in order, <laughs> okay? So you're learning the stuff you need to know at the beginning, and then you take what you know from that and into the next lesson, and you learn something else, and you take something from that into the next one, you learn something else. So it all kind of builds on itself, and it's it's a process, and it's all there in one place, whereas YouTube, YouTube's not optimal for content like that. You know, there's, there's a lot of it. It's not really organized. If you want to just go to one place and learn all the stuff you need to know, at least my methods of doing things, then that's what the course is for. Courses are for. I keep forgetting and there's two of them now. So thanks for watching. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.